<laughs> Are you on video? Yeah, I'm on video. That's your 30 <laughs> inch or 10 pound right there. 30 inches, 10 pounds, and you're about to go back in the water. On a green flicker shad, baby. You ready for that? What's up, Fisher people? We're gonna talk about rank bait trolling today and a unique method that I learned a couple of years ago from somebody else. Of course, I didn't invent this. I haven't invented a lot of things, um, but I like to use it a lot. I've been doing it for a couple of years. Um, and it basically has to do with how you get the crankbait down to the depth that you wanna to get to. So to start with, you know, crankbaits are built with bills that get them to dive. So when this pulls through the water, depending on the shape and the size of that bill, it'll dive less or more. Um, and it also dep depends on the speed you're going, like how much impact is the bill hitting against the water to what depth you're gonna get. Um, so old school method, you would just tie on a crankbait and the deeper you want it to go, the more line you would let out and it would dive further and further and further down. You can also use a weighting system though to do that. So we do a lot of lead core line trolling as well. And lead core is basically just line that has literally a chunk of lead in the middle of the line so that it's weighted and sinks into the water. And there's a formula that you can use with lead core. Uh, for every 30 feet of line, you typically get about five feet of depth out of your crankbait when you're trolling at about two miles an hour. Um, but even with that, like if you want to fish a deep spot, um, you're still going to need quite a bit of line to get down there. So say you're fishing 35, 40 feet of water, you might still have to let out 200 some feet of line, which you can do if you're trolling a big, long stretch of flat or some consistent piece of structure. But if you want to fish, say, a sunken hump, or a very curvy piece of shoreline where your contours are changing a lot. You gotta make a lot of sharp turns. It's very hard to do that with 250 feet of line out the back of the boat. So if you wanna be much more precise, you can add more and more and more weight to get your line more straight down, more vertical underneath the boat so that you can maneuver yourself much better and stay on top of the spot that you wanna be on. So in order to do that, I've been using crankbaits behind bottom bouncers a lot lately. You can also use crankbaits behind a snap weight, or you can use three-way rigs or whatever you want to do. But the more weight you put on there, like in this case, like a two ounce bottom bouncer, again, the more vertical your line is going to be and the more precise you can be about exactly where you want that bait to be. So first of all, why do I bother doing this? Well, I happen to think that bigger walleye in particular tend to like crankbaits better than live bait. A majority of the time. Not always the case, of course, but I do think they tend to catch bigger fish. Also, if I'm running the boat and I got a bunch of other people in there, um, it's not always easy to pay attention to a rod when you're trying to run the trolling motor, net fish, help other people get baited up, whatever the case is. So this allows me to put something back there with a set of two treble hooks, maybe three treble hooks, that's going to ensure that that fish gets hooked up more often than not, even if I'm not touching my pole. So I don't have to worry about setting the hook. Um, on top of that, uh, it gives you a chance to run two presentations at once. So a lot of times it, when you first get out on the water for the day, you don't necessarily know what the fish want and what they're going to hit. So this gives you the opportunity um, to mix and match. You can use live baits and spinners on a couple of poles and you can put crank baits on other poles with the same setup, the same weight system, you don't have, like normally you wouldn't run 200 and some feet of line with a crankbait and then have a bottom bouncer rod sitting right next to it with, with live bait. But if you do it this way, they're all with the same setup and you just have a crankbait on the back of a weighting system and you can mix and match and do both. And I've had days where in the morning, the fish will hit nothing but live bait and then all of a sudden the crankbait rods start lighting up in the middle of the day. And then towards the end of the day, it changes back over to live bait again. So it gives you the ability to kind of feel out what the fish are switching to throughout the day even. So you get two presentations at once. 
you can stay tighter to a spot. Like I was saying, if you're fishing a tiny little sunken rock pile, hump, um, maybe it's just a piece of shoreline that has super, super sharp contours and it, you got to do a lot of in and out and turning to stay on that. That's really hard to do with 200 feet of line out the back of the boat. But if you only got 50, 60 feet of line almost straight down, you can stay on top of it a lot easier and you won't get things tangled up. I um, mean, you can also go about as fast or slow as you want in that case and vary your speed without having to worry about how much line you have back there. So if you got a heavy enough bottom ounce or two, three ouncer, you want to go one mile an hour with the crankbait, you can do that. You can go one and a half, you can probably go up to two and it's still going to stay down in most depths um, up to like 40 feet. So it gives you a lot more versatility that way because you're not so dependent on how much line you're letting out the back. Um, so if you're going to do this, you got to do it right. Um, you got to pick your weight of choice. Again, do you want to use a bottom bouncer? Do you want to use a snap weight? Do you want to use a three-way three -way rig? Whatever you feel comfortable with doing, I would say do that. I've been trolling bottom outs just forever. I'm just very comfortable with that. I like that approach. Um, then your leader line matters. So you got your bottom bouncer. If I can figure out which side of the screen this is going to show up in. And then how much leader line you have depends on what your lure is going to do. So again, most crank rates are built to dive. So the longer your leader line is, the more depth you're going to get on your crank bait behind your weighting system, right? So you also have to be careful then uh, with what type of crankbait you pick. So typically you're going to want to use like a floating crankbait or a shallow dive or something with a small bill like this. The smaller the bill, the less it's going to dive. Otherwise, you're just going to be digging into the ground. So if you're pulling a bomber with this big, massive bill, these things are built to dive to like 25, 30, even 35 feet, depending on how much line you got out. You put that behind... <laughs> A four foot leader, five foot leader behind a bottom bouncer, it's going to be digging in the ground the whole time and you're going to be snagged up the wazoo. So, ideally, go with a floater or a shallow diver. But like flicker minnows tend to work pretty well. And in fact, this is the exact flicker minnow, the exact color that I used to catch that 30 inch or devil's leg, which you may or may not have seen in this video clip. So, yeah, there's a lot of advantages to it. You get a variety of baits down there. You get more versatility, and it's easier to control your boat and stay on a tight, tight area. Like if you're trolling a very long stretch, a very homogenous, even-keeled shoreline, flats, open water trolling, if you're trolling open water in the middle of the summer for suspended fish, great, throw on the lead core and start running. But if you want to stay on a tight spot and you want to use a crankbait, this is the way to do it. So thanks for watching. If you like the video, click the button and say so. Check us out at BloomendahlFishing.com, especially if you want to book a trip. And check out more videos here on the Bloomendahl Fishing YouTube channel. Now go out and troll some crankbaits and catch some big walleyes. Are you on video? <laughs> yeah, I'm on video. That's your 30 <laughs> inch or 10 pound right there. 30 inches, 10 pounds, and you're about to go back in the water. On a green flicker shad, baby. You ready for that?